Welcome to Two Brothers Talking. I'm Israel. And I'm Eli. Joining us today is a dear friend of ours. She's not only a philanthropist, but an author of Into the Portal and the current title holder for Umissima County, Gabriella Hines. Welcome Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. We, uh, it's been about a year since you last came on in our last episode. I know. I'd Time like... flies with with a global pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'd like to, if we can, kind of pick up where we left off. Talk about where you've been in this past year and what's currently on your heart right now. Yeah, yeah um, so it's funny because you had reached out to me and said, let's do another episode. Uh, and I was very excited about that. I had a lot of fun on the last one. I know we talked about a lot of social impact initiative yeah. events that I had happening at the time. And COVID really made all of us get creative, right? Like we had to to reinvent ourselves. We had to learn how to reach new audiences because we didn't have what we did before. Um, and so I just started looking at the needs around me and specifically what I wanted to do with my social impact initiative, which is sex trafficking prevention, and really saw in this time that, that COVID shut everything down, relationships fall apart. Because we had to be honest about where our relationships were. We had to be honest about the person we were with and where we were as people. And it was heartbreaking. I had so many friends go through breakups. I had so many friends just realize that they weren't fulfilled by their relationships, not even just romantically, but in general. We did not have the support system that we thought we needed. So with that, um, I, you know, just I sat thinking a lot and and tried to figure out what was going to be the most effective way to create something for young adults, for teenagers, for really all demographics to take something valuable and strengthen their relationships. And so, you know, me and Israel sat on a FaceTime one day, just kind of, you know, me pouring my heart out saying, this is where I'm at right now. My, my, my heart really is just for relationships. I want to teach people how to pursue healthy relationships. And he was like, let's do it. Let's make a series out of it. And that was kind of how this came to life. So I'm really excited. There's so many things that, you know, other people, mentors in my life have shared with me that are on this document in front of me that I can't wait to share with you guys. Um, I know you guys have already worked through it with me as well. So I think it'll be so amazing. I hope it blesses people. I hope it encourages people. Uh, But I cannot wait. I think that's fantastic. And when we chatted about it right after I called Eli, I said, hey, like, this is an idea we have. What are your thoughts on it? And I don't know if you want to share kind of what what you you were like almost 100% in right away. Yeah, I've been passionate about uh, really, I mean, I think, you know, since since I started dating your sister, <laughs> uh, passionate about not only having a relationship, but having a, a beneficial and quality yeah. relationship over having a relationship. Yeah. I think a lot of people approach relationships with may, maybe, the, I don't want to say the the bad intentions, because I don't think most people approach relationships with negative intentions, right. but with right. attentions like, if it, you know, if I'm with this person, then I'll be happy. Right. Or if if I have, you know, X, Y, Z, if I'm, oh, if I'm just married, my life will be better. And realistically, that's not a great way to approach a relationship. Uh, and there are a lot of pitfalls to that. There are a lot of pitfalls to relationships in general. Uh, and a lot of it has to start with making sure I'm good. Yeah. Making sure I'm ready. Uh, and so once you started approaching me with, you know, what we're ta- what we talked about and kind of Gabriella's approach, I was like, yes, yeah, hundred percent. And let's do it. And you put together this really great framework for identifying not only key behaviors, but really, points of exploration and conversation and evaluation, right? So can you walk us through each one? Yeah, I'll give uh, just a brief overview of what the next couple segments are gonna be and then we'll we'll dive in. But the first one is Mm self-love. And um, I really wanted to break this down and kind of present self-love in a counterculture way. We have self-love so wrong right now. 
And I wanted to clarify what it actually is and why it's important for relationships, healing from past relationships. We all have relational baggage. We all take things from our friends, from our family, from former partners into our relationships in the future. And we have to learn how to heal from that in order to have healthy relationships again. Um, the other one is defining what love is. We also have really gotten wrong what love actually is. And so many people are heartbroken yeah. because it's not what they imagined. And they set themselves up for a relationship that was doomed to fail because they believed that love was some emotion or some feeling. And then finally, uh, or sorry, I have a couple, couple more points. Um, choosing a partner, we don't even know where to start with that. We don't even know what we want. Yeah. We just think, you know, I'll know when I know. We hear that all the time. Oh, you'll just know when it's the one. <laughs> follow your heart. <laughs> yes, follow your heart. And maybe there is some truth to having confidence in the person that you're with. But there are also very, very important barometers to measure a person by to know if they're a good man or woman to be with. Mm -hmm establishing relational and physical boundaries because holy cow that has gotten crazy right the whole <laughs> me too movement started yeah. because we don't have boundaries anymore and there's nothing wrong with setting boundaries it's okay i want to emphasize this it is okay to be counterculture in your relationships one in two marriages is failing so obviously something that we're doing is not working yeah and we need to start calling it out being honest about it and doing the hard work to make our relationship successful. And finally, when to end a relationship. So many people are stuck in relationships because they feel like they have to make it work. They're afraid of what happens if they break up with them. Yep. Will they ever find another person? Mm. Oh my goodness, my biological clock is ticking. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. If you're dating someone, to whoever is listening to this, whatever man, woman is listening to this, if you are dating someone right now and it does not work out, it's okay. <laughs> it is okay if you guys do not get married. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, I don't know if there's something wrong with them. I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> um, but but for real, we don't need to have such high pressure on these dating relationships. That's yeah. the point of this all. Yeah. That is the point is to decide if this is someone we're willing to commit our lives to, to work hard for, and create exactly the, the life that we want together with them. So these were kind of, you know, the pillars of what I felt like make healthy relationships that I'm really excited to, to break down over the next couple of weeks. And I think it resonates with a lot of people. So, so many people that I've talked to have questions about all of these things and really just don't know where to start with it. Yeah. So I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be amazing. I think we're extremely excited not only to, to take part in this journey, but also go through each pillar, right, and expand on that. Can we talk about self-love? What does that look like? How is that reality check put in place? And like, what's that conversation? Yeah. Absolutely. I think I said this on the last podcast, actually, which is funny. It's a little bit of <laughs> foreshadowing to today. <laughs> um, but but self-love is actually really ugly. Mm -hmm. And I know that right now we glorify it on social media. Right now we say that self-love is taking a bubble bath and just eating your chocolate and lighting a candle, watching some rom-com and calling it a day because you're sad. Mm. Um, that's fine. Okay, if you wanna take a bubble bath, I love bubble baths, I'm all for it. But self-love is really hard work. It's not indulging in chocolate because you had a bad day. It means having conversations with people that are uncomfortable so you can increase the quality of your relationships. Mm -hmm. It means holding yourself accountable to the things that you know you should be doing that you're not doing. If your goal is to graduate college, but you're failing your classes, you're not loving yourself well. <laughs> you are doing yourself a disservice by allowing your own laziness. Self-love is not it is not giving in to your own desires constantly. It means saying, I'm going to do something because I know that's what my life needs, regardless of how I feel about it right now. And we are so caught up in our emotions. If our heart is telling us, again, if our heart is telling us one thing, then that's what we should do. And it's just not true. 
our heart is deceptive. It's going to tell us a thousand different things. And sometimes we have to move with our head knowledge until our heart gets there. Sometimes we have to do what we know is right until we feel that way. Hmm. I don't always want to go to work, but I know that I have bills to pay and I know that I need to steward well my professional life. So I'm going to keep showing up until my mindset is so ingrained in believing that that's essential for my life. And self-love is the exact same way. Yeah, our listeners, uh, we, we talk about this a lot, candid conversations. Yeah. Having that candid conversation with yourself, that look in the mirror and being able to confront the ugly truth sometimes, um, having that honest, open dialogue is really going to help us identify where we might Absolutely. not be loving ourselves, right? Absolutely. No, and that's the next point is learning your needs. Mm. When we are, are loving ourselves well, part of that is understanding what we need as, as human beings, as we process the world. And it's important for relationships because then you can say to your significant other, you know, I'm really having a bad day, but five years ago, I took the time to understand what I need as a person. And right now what I need is for you to affirm me. Mm-hmm. Right now what I need is for you to, to spend some time with me. What I need is for you to give me some space, right? We're all different. We all need different things when we ha- when we had a bad day, when we're stressed out, when we want to celebrate. But when we become so introspective that we're fully aware of who we are and how we engage with the world, then we become the best version of ourselves. And we can pull our partner alongside for healthy communication so they're not guessing our needs. So they're not having to be mind readers because we're not. We can't just know. <laughs> and uh, that's such such an important piece for for establishing healthy self-love is, is recognizing what your needs are. And it's way easier to do that when you're not with a partner. If you're with a partner, you can still do this. But take advantage of that of that single season to learn what your needs are. Yeah, I think that kind of ties into kind of going against or counter to our wants as well. Because there's times that I want something I don't need it. Yeah. And there's times when I need something and I may not even want it. Uh, case in point, those difficult conversations, I may not want those conversations. They might yeah. not be comfortable. Uh, yeah. I may not want to be single right now, yeah. but do I need to be single? Do I need to spend some time saying, you know what, what does Eli need to work on so that when a relationship comes, I'm not stepping into it just as a landmine. Just so yes. if you step on this part, I'm going to explode. Or step on that part, things are going to break down making sure to kind of put that need in perspective and taking an honest look at myself. And with, we talked about kind of conversations with someone who I can rely on to say, Hey, you know what, Eli, you need to work on this. Yeah. You need to, Absolutely. you, you need to, yeah, you need that accountability. You need that. Uh, you know, Eli, this is, this is something you need to tweak a little bit. So when you do get in a relationship, it doesn't become an issue. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Um, and on top of that, Protecting our thoughts is so important mm-hmm. when we're when we're learning how to self love well, <laughs> when we're learning how to self love in a way that is counterculture, and that is effective. We have to protect our thoughts because we are not victims. And I know it's easy, especially when you're single and you kind of get sucked in that that thought train of like, "Woe is me! Life is terrible! There's not a man or a woman that loves me." You have to be so careful to cover your mind and take captive everything that you're thinking, good and bad, because you can run wild with your thoughts. If our goal is to love ourselves better, to be disciplined, to create the characteristics inside of us that we want to see, we have to protect our thoughts. And going back to relationships, I know sometimes when when we're in this place where we're really working on self-love, usually, not all the time, but usually it is in a season of singleness. That's that's when we're focusing on that. If we're sitting there feeding, fueling these thoughts about other men or other women as we're trying to protect our singleness, you're going to spend so much energy dismantling these thoughts that you've now turned into an entire scenario instead of just protecting your mind in the first place. So now because we've envisioned a life with this person that we're not even dating, that we don't need to be with, instead of focusing on loving ourselves, instead of protecting our mind, now we have so much extra work to do, tearing apart this thing that was never meant to be. 
So it's really important when you're in this place of loving yourself, of being in singleness, that you are so careful to not go down rabbit trails like that and cut it off before before it grows into a massive tree, you know, uh, because it's easy to just let it go, um, let our thoughts run wild and they will eat us up. But you have to be careful to protect your mind, protect your heart in that place. So we're not we're not dismantling these huge, huge ideas um, and, and worldviews that that we're never supposed to be.